the U.S. is just as culpable as Israel for the atrocities committed in Gaza. The Israeli government dropped thousands of leaflets on Gaza, telling everyone who lives in the northern part of the Strip that they have 24 hours to evacuate to the southern part, and then bombed the people who were trying to evacuate. United Nations spokesman Stéphane Dujeric denounced the evacuation order, saying the UN considers it impossible for such a movement to take place without devastating humanitarian consequences. Many Palestinians have said they're going to stay where they are because they have nowhere safe to go, despite being told by Israel that they must leave if they want to save their lives. We're about to see the death and destruction get much, much worse in Gaza, and it's already very, very bad. As of this writing, the official death toll from the Israeli airstrikes in Gaza is speeding past 1,900, a number which includes 614 children. The primary job of Israel apologists in the coming days will be producing and circulating narratives explaining why this self-evidently terrible thing is actually perfectly fine and reasonable. It's so incredibly obvious what we're looking at here. The only thing putting a wobble on people's perception is the immense amount of propaganda distortion the media is churning out on this issue, plus the fact that the demographics look a bit different from what history has conditioned people to watch out for. If there were two million Jewish people trapped by Christians in a giant concentration camp and placed under total siege, being told that half of them had 24 hours to relocate into the other half or be killed, nobody would have any confusion about what they were witnessing. And top-down commands are being issued within the U.S. government to support this massacre unconditionally. The Huffington Post reports that the State Department has been circulating internal emails telling staff to avoid calls for peace, instructing them to refrain from using phrases like de-escalation slash ceasefire, end to violence slash bloodshed, and restoring calm. Asked about progressive congressional members calling for a ceasefire, White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre said, We believe they are wrong, we believe they're repugnant, and we believe they're disgraceful. On the question of whether there are any potential Israeli actions that the White House would not tolerate, U.S. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan told reporters, I'm not here to draw red lines or issue warnings or give lectures to anybody. So to be perfectly clear for anyone who is confused, the U.S. government is fully behind this massacre and is just as culpable for everything that happens in Gaza as the Israeli government. These abuses are being perpetrated using U.S. weapons, U.S. funding, and U.S. consent. Washington could end this mass atrocity with a word, and instead they're fully aligning themselves behind it. Israel's crimes in Gaza are not meaningfully separate from the crimes of the U.S. war machine. And this is just a continuation and extension of the violence and bloodshed the U.S. government has been inflicting around the world for generations. There's a clip of George W. Bush going around from a California event on Tuesday in which, for some bizarre, unfathomable reason, the former president was asked to provide his opinion on what Israel should do in response to the Hamas attack on October 7th. Bush said pretty much what you'd expect him to say. You're dealing with cold-blooded killers... Negotiating with killers is not an option. Only one side is guilty. The same book he's been reciting from since September 11, 2001. What I find most interesting is, why is anyone asking the absolute worst person you could possibly ask about what should be done in response to such an attack? I mean, Bush is literally the very last person in the entire world who anyone should be asking what to do in this situation. Literally dead last, there are 8 billion people walking this earth right now who are infinitely more qualified to answer such questions than George W. Bush. The agendas Bush set out to advance in the wake of 9-11 plunged the Middle East into violence and chaos, which wound up killing millions and displacing tens of millions, all supposedly in response to an attack which killed 3,000. What is this man doing holding a microphone and publicly opining on what Israel should do in response to the Hamas attack? As we discussed earlier, 9-11 marked the beginning of some of the most deadly and catastrophic decisions ever made in U.S. history. Israel has demonstrated that it is eager to repeat these profoundly depraved decisions to the furthest extent possible, and the U.S. has demonstrated that it will fully support it in doing so. 
This is because the United States never learned any moral lessons from its warmongering after 9-11. If it had, George W. Bush would be sitting in a prison cell, and the U.S. wouldn't be backing a mass atrocity in Gaza. The U.S. centralized empire is the most murderous and tyrannical power structure on earth, of which Israel's criminality is just one component.